windy a second ago. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to an overlanding episode. <laughs> I use that term very freely. Uh, so today we're out here in the Gila National Forest, somewhere in the middle of nowhere in southwest New Mexico. I've been wanting to do this video for a long time and a lot of, if you're already subscribed to the channel, I know a lot of you guys have already asked about this uh, kind of stuff. So the reason why I did the whole quotations thing is because I have some issues with definitions of overlanding and like people's perceptions of what kind of rigs and everything you need. So I'm just going to cut to the chase and make this really short and simple in terms of my explanation. My name is Brent Hall. I'm a full-time professional photographer and YouTuber. I do all of uh, all types of photography, astrophotography, uh, landscape, wildlife photography, a lot of wildlife photography, nature, um, extreme sports, a lot of extreme sports. So as you can imagine, I'm outdoors a lot. It's my job to be out here in places like this. While it would be very nice for me to have a Jeep or a Tacoma or, you know, any sort of like traditional overlanding style vehicle, I do not have that. And I'm here to fully advocate and support for the fact that you do not need any of that stuff. You don't need a hundred thousand dollar rig with rooftop campers and, and all of that stuff. Is it nice? Would I love to have one? Absolutely. But, uh, <laughs> I don't got the frog skins, you know? So we're gonna go over today what I do have and how it works for me. And I'm gonna show you uh, just my setup and walk you through how I've rigged out my Subaru Crosstrek, my 2013 fully paid off Subaru Crosstrek, which is why I'm not upgrading because uh, this car right now is, is mine. <laughs> and it's still doing good mechanically. So we're gonna talk about this. Uh, we're gonna talk about how I've rigged it out, what kind of accessories I have, what kind of stuff you need for different levels of overlanding and for comfort and for maybe, you know, if you're here, hopefully you uh, enjoy photography. If you, if not, no worries. It's just all about getting out in nature. So let's go over and let's go take a walk through around the Subaru. Let's set up camp and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, well, first things first, roof box is essential for this kind of stuff. And then uh, first thing I have is this gazebo. Okay, tent set up, car set up. You know what, before we go into the bulk of the rig, Let's talk about some exterior stuff real quick because uh, when you have, well, regardless of what type of vehicle you have, uh, tires are the most important things because that's what's really gonna help. Like everything else helps from there, but tires are the first thing on the ground. They should be the only thing on the ground. <laughs> so uh, these tires that I have are the stock size. They're the 17 inch. Um, rims i haven't changed the rims i'd like to downsize and put some beefier tires on there but as it stands these are the wild peak the falcon wild peak uh, at trail tires and they're a very modest uh, all-terrain tire but i had the yokohama geolander at tires on here for a long time and these wild peaks in my opinion for my use have been way better uh, they're a little grippier off-road. They do really great in snow and sand, which I have a lot of sand out here. The tread is all right. It's more aggressive than some and definitely way less aggressive than anything like a KO2 or whatever. But the big thing for me is the Wild Peaks. They do really well on the road. And that's where, you know, I still spend most of the time is on paved roads. And the Wild Peaks have way less road noise for me than the Geolanders did. So just get yourself a nice set of AT tires. Um, and if you can, it's no big deal. Just pay attention to where you're going and be careful, you know, but that's the first easiest upgrade anybody can do to any vehicle. Uh, and these really help out the capability of my Subaru. And also, like I said before, for something this size, this tiny, for me, a roof box is seriously essential, especially because um, I have a family. I have my wife, camera lady, who she's not here by the way. So she normally films the videos. 
Uh, so if you saw any autofocus issues in the first part, sorry about that. I've switched it, I fixed it. And then we've got our son Tristan who's 14 and he lives in the back. Uh, so he needs a space and uh, roof box is super essential, but I'm on the wrong side. I had to push it over all the way, which is so I can fit my gazebo on the other side. But that makes it nice for here. So the most important thing is helmets because Tristan and I are skateboarders. <laughs> I didn't realize I still had that in there. I probably did. Uh, anyways, up here, this is a pretty big sized, this is the biggest I could comfortably fit on here without it, you know, going back to the back and sticking over. Uh, but it holds a lot. We've got sleeping bags. We've got camping pads for when we're car camping. We've got tables and chairs, extra sleeping bags, extra camping pads stoves, uh, a giant first aid kit. I was part of search and rescue for a long time and um, in the military and everything and first aid, I cannot, I just, I cannot tell you the importance of preparedness for all kinds of things, especially when you have a family, but who knows what, you know, I, anyways, we're not gonna talk about those stories. Um, <laughs> we got chairs, we got tables, we got everything we need in here. So I'll, pull some of that out. Uh, I got hammocks, I got extra canned food, whatever we need. So roof box is essential. All right, let's take a look inside, go over the next bit. So this is the next most important thing to me, especially as someone with a family. So we've got the important stuff. We've got all the dinner and the drinks and the pumpkin pie that Tristan made me before I left and uh, all the food in there, so super handy. Really nice, we've got it cooling. And then down here behind the front seat uh, is where I have water. So down here I have these are super important. So this is a gallon jug and these are liters and I have quite a few of these for hiking and for other things. Uh, These are all full, so, you know, hydro flask and regular Nalgene with a little case. All kinds of water. I have enough water for five people in here, even though I only have a family of three, and that's in case we all drink a lot or we need extra or I find somebody on the trail that needs more. Because that's super important to me. Uh, the next thing we have down in the front seat is just a little propane. So that's a uh, five pound propane, I think. Last thing on this side. So this is a water filter purifier. Uh, this is the Grail water purifier and uh, it's amazing. It is a little heavy and a little inconvenient for backpacking, but I'm not always backpacking. This mostly lives in the car and this is just for what you would expect if we get in a sketchy place and need some water or, you know, gas station that looks suspect or a creek or a lake or whatever, although in New Mexico, water is pretty hard to find. So anyways, filter super important. Oh, and while we're on this side, since these are out, I got these thingies. These are great. So they just go over like that. And then you can uh, roll the window down and be bug free and have ventilation so that it doesn't steam up inside the car. And I don't ever really get cold. So sleeping, uh, even when it's winter outside, sleeping with the windows cracked and nice fresh air, these things are a lifesaver. And they added a little bit of, all right, so we'll come around here to everybody's favorite part of the rig. Uh, oh, these are the solar panels. We'll talk about that in a little bit for accessory stuff. So this is kind of like the main attraction. It seems kind of silly to say that because it, I spent less than $100 building this. And I wanted to keep it light because that's the other thing, taking consideration whatever rig you have. If you're not gonna upgrade suspension and all that stuff, then you need to be careful about your total weight. And with the Subaru, that's true. So I didn't wanna do like quarter inch ply or anything like that, or three eighths. So I did, it's really light uh, and it just, it lifts up and comes out. I'll take it out in a little bit, but it's just got the main bit here. It's got the, um, the main top and I can set all the stuff on, which is great. But the main thing here is this comes out and it comes out in three different ways. It comes out just like this where I can have just a little bit of extra space. And then it comes out a little bit more like this so I can have even more space. And then it comes out 
all the way. Well, I can remove it just simply like that. Uh, but I made this little latch here so that it stays like that. And then I got a, a grooved hole that I can put a tripod down here and it sits out and I can have my whole station there for cooking and all of that stuff. So that's really handy. All right, so the next best thing about this whole setup is it's able to compartmentalize so I can have uh, room to store stuff underneath and on top, which it really helps out in the, in the back of the Subaru. So now I've got plenty of space here. This is, it's always good to have a, a little knife around. This was actually my knife in the Navy. And this was my great uncle's knife from uh, World War II. So I just always keep stuff like that on me. You never know. Okay, so then we got this side area, which is where I usually keep my boots. And when I'm wearing my skate shoes and switch out a nice pair of shoes right here, or boots or whatever. Uh, but then you got this guy, but then you got this guy, which can come out all the way if I want. Um, and it's just, uh, it's just a drawer and it's got whatever seasonal, an extra, it's got an extra, you know, f uh, fleece and hat and my, some of my camo gear, uh, blow up thing for the mattress, for the air mattress, um, extra charger which is really good because i realized on the way out here that i forgot my charger and i already had a dead battery so i always keep an extra extra emergency charger for my camera batteries in here we've got loom cube lights we've got a fan we've got a usb fan because again i run hot we got all kinds of so we got extra camera accessories we got walkie talkie chargers the work so this is just a little storage drawer super handy And that can slide all the way back in there and then I, I don't have to pull it all the way out. I can just pull it, you know, a quarter of the way out and get whatever stuff I need. On the side pockets, on the sides, we've got extra stuff like my ghillie suit, camo stuff. I got an extra pair of water shoes, um, some my jet boil hiking, extra camo pants, the works, you know, that kind of stuff. We got toiletries and stuff over there. So that's pretty much the back area. And we got one more side, so let's go take a look at that, see what I got going on over there. All right, so over here we've got everything. I've got the seat folded down whenever Tristan's not uh, riding with me, which is a lot of the time. And that makes it a nice flat area for camera bags. So another thing that I love about the back thing is that I can switch out where I had the yellow storage container and I can put my camera underneath there and my camera bags underneath there and that makes it a little more not theft proof but a little less obvious you can't see what's under there there's no way you can look inside here and see what's under that shelf so if you got the valuables and you can't lock them any other way I, I could also put them in the roof box I know the roof box is easy to pick but again it's not one of those things that people are going to think about like I've had people smash the back of my window and steal stuff because my camera bag was like right there in the back of the window um, you know, but they can't do that if, if the camera bag is underneath the, uh, the box in the back or if it's in the roof box. So I got lots of options for at least minimizing. I don't have a safe or anything like that, but I have options for minimizing theft. Uh, and of course everything is insured. And then down here I've just got, is usually where I keep groceries. I've just got this, uh, extra bag full of the dry goods groceries that can float around. Uh, but this is a super important thing for being out for multiple days. And that's this uh, Helio shower. And this is a 7 liter, I believe. So it's pretty nice. And it's, you, can, you can pump it with this thing with a foot pump. So it's, it's pressurized. And then it has the little uh, spray nozzle. So you can use it like a shower. Or in most cases, what I use it for is dishes. So that's... That's really great. That's seven liters of water is kind of heavy. So that's how I have the extra storage down there. And then back here. So back here I have, this is my EcoFlow 
And none of this is sponsored, by the way. This is just all the gear that I use and I have and I've bought over the years. Um, but I've got my battery. EcoFlow is my brand of choice. I've been using them for a really long time. This is a 760 something watt battery. So I'd like to have a thousand or, or higher, which hopefully I'll upgrade to. So you can come in here and see that it's hooked up to the fridge. So I've got the fridge going uh, and it's got all of this stuff. I've had the fridge plugged in for a couple of hours now and we're at 93% still. So that's looking really good and it'll show you input output and I mean, it, you know, it's a battery. Okay, so that's pretty much a walk around of the setup. Let's, uh, let's go inside and get out of this wind and sit down and I'll show you how I pull this stuff out and get set up and everything. And we'll talk about a couple more things and wrap it up. Okay, I forgot, let me show you one more thing. So this is the, the slide out tray from my work, from my desk box thingy. So it's just long enough to fit right here in the back uh, because this back part on the cross track is recessed a couple of inches. So that it, it doesn't fit perfectly, but it, it gives it enough for where when I lay down. So let me show you the bed setup real quick. So I'm spoiled and the military destroyed my body. So I don't like backpacking or like sleeping on crap anymore. So uh, I have a few different very plush camping mats. This is one of them. This is the REI Camp Bed 3.5 and it's a mix of self-inflating with a little bit of memory foam in there. This thing just barely fits in to the cross track. And by barely, I mean like it's not supposed to. The front seat's all the way up. I have to sleep a little bit crooked. I'm six foot one, but I can't fit in here. And I told you about this thing. It's just a little cheap $20 uh, USB inflator power pack thing. And it just, uh, it inflates. All right, that took like 27 seconds. So you see, I got to jerry rig it a little bit. I got to, got to do it from this end. I just pull that up a little bit like that so that it doesn't stick out. And then sleeping bag and everything, pillows and all that going here. I put my head down here. Uh, and then I put the little shelfy thing, the little drawer that was over here. I put that down there for an extra brace, uh, you know, the gap under the seat. And then everything, I still got room, you know, for all my stuff over here, extra blankets, clothes, you know, all that stuff. So it's a tight fit, but uh, it's comfortable. All right, that's my sleep setup. Let's uh, head into the gazebo, the tent, the office, the kitchen, the everything room. <laughs> okay, comfy chairs, handy. It's a nice little portable rocky chair thing. All right, well, that was a long video. I think everybody probably knew that would be a long video. <laughs> Just doing the, you know, everything, the whole walk around and showing off everything. It takes time, but hopefully that was enjoyable. Hopefully it helped you see you know, these are just the things that I have. I'll try to, I'll leave a, I have a link for like all my camera gear and stuff. You know, I have all those links down below, but I'll try to make a separate page link with all of my gear that's not uh, camera gear. You know, all of this stuff that's, that's listed. So I'll try to make a more comprehensive list of everything that I have. So hopefully that just inspires you guys maybe to get out and, you know, use what you have and, and know that you can, you know, everything can be in increments and you don't need the fancy rigs with the overlanding stuff and, you know, just use what you have. But if you guys have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over like well enough, leave those in the comments below and I will definitely answer them. I want to make one more quick shout out. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier that I made this, um, but 
I did not make this. My friend made it for me. Uh, and I just supervised and hung out with him while he did all of the hard work and I threw some ideas at him for how I wanted things. But my friend, my friend Josh made this and he is an amazing human being. He's one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met in my life. So shout out to Josh. If you ever see this, Josh, I love you, man. You're my hero. I couldn't have done all this stuff without you. <laughs> all right, that's it. It's definitely lunchtime now. I am starving. I missed 11 C's. I missed second breakfast, 11 C's and I'm ready for lunch, ready for tea. So leave those questions, comments down below. All right, it's tea time. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next one.